Okay. <laughs> All right, so this point that I'm going to present to you, uh, last year I got asked to, you know, the compulsory change and stuff. So I was presenting, I'm in Region 5, so they, uh, they were asking me to present something new and stuff, and they assigned me to very, very basic gymnastics, which is developing, uh, which was level 1 to 3 volt, and I'm like, oh, why are you going to, sounds boring. Okay, but anyway, I had the funnest time and I learned the most out of this clinic out of everyone because I like to sit down and study what I'm going to present and, and you know, all the work that we've done with the kids in the past. And I have to say that this was probably one, the next two clinics, this one, the one afterwards, and the last one are probably the ones that I've got the most fun putting them together because I felt like that's where our kids were. That's one of what we were doing. And um, it has a lot of really good information. It's not just the last thing you're going to see is the level one or three bulk. This is all about preparing kids to bulk. Okay. You're going to see lots of uh, drills, a lot of conditioning, a lot of stuff that you can do with your older kids too, and not necessarily just uh, little kids. All right. So the first thing, bulk seems to be always the event that is labeled as the simplest, the full, the full form, okay? We always spend the last time vaulting. If there's a rotation or event that's going to suffer, it's vault because it's so simple, okay? Uh, always I know that even, even when we do uh, training plans and stuff, always vault is the one that has the less priority, okay? Because we think it's the easiest. Um, and for many different reasons, okay? But the truth is that great vaulters have a big advantage over the competition, always. The kid that has great vaults, is the, is, I think it's the, the event that's easiest to score the highest, okay? So great vaulter always has big advantage. And uh, so with this, you've got to get away from the thought that Vault is the simplest, so let's not put too much energy into it. The truth is, too, that a great vaulting program can provide a gymnast with lots of fundamentals that will grow and strengthen many of their abilities that are vital to become an integral gymnast, not just for vault. Okay? Remember, integral, that's what we want to do. We just don't want a kid strong on beam or strong on something. We want a gymnast that can do all four events. It develops quickness, agility. Strength and actually, those are these are the things that you work. You can work on ball in order to create an integral gymnast. Quickness, agility, strength, coordination, power, shaping a work, and all those things are extremely valuable for every single event. The level one, one of three ball in the 2013 to I don't know if it is a 17 program. It seems to be very simple and easy. It is if you approach it. Like Way. Okay? If you give it that necessary importance, the, the, the priority, this program can help you structure many aspects of all which will affect the future of us. Not only level one, but the, the experts that designed this, they designed it with a vision of optional vaulting. Not only level one, three vault. This is a developmental program. It's not a competition program. Okay? Very positive aspects of level one and three. Remember, you always there's certain things in training and gymnastics that we as coaches don't have too much passion for. You know, some of you probably don't like beam or bars or whatever, but uh, we always have to see out of everything what are the positives that we can get in order to make this better gymnast. Um, uh, and I think it's that the inclusion of the run that is so important here, which is. Uh, you know, ball depends on power, okay? Uh, if they're not technical, again, like I said in the previous clinic, power can over, take precedent over technique, okay? So now all of you know that the judge, that the judges take in consideration and deduct for a uh, not correct run. Coaches need to pay careful attention to a technique in the structure of the run. 
we're going to talk a little bit about a significant part of practice needs to be dedicated to the run uh, or the approach to the board. Remember that this, if you have level one and three, if you're training level one and three on this, it's you're training it for the future, okay? And you can spend plenty of time just working the run. And again, if they learn to run correctly, they're going to join many years of easier gymnastics. So the focus of this level should be teaching the progressions to, to efficient basics, such as the run, the body shape, and strengthening in general. Do not focus on the scores of this. Okay, level one, two, three, it's not about the scores. It's about all those valuable things that you can get from training for the future of, of their life. Okay? And this is the level one to three ball. Uh, easy. I mean, it's just a straight jump to mats. And then they kick to handstand and they go to the back. And one of the coolest things about this video is that I had the perfect mom. They had so much fun. Okay, so that is uh, that is a ball. Okay. Very simple. Get up on our angle. Consistent run, arm circle, land, and stand, and run. Now don't ask me how many steps backwards it can, they can take because I don't know. <laughs> so I just realized that I don't know if they can take two or one or anyway. I'm just here to talk to you about the technique that we're going to do. Read the text for that. Okay, All right. Stay. All right, there are the deductions. Stepping, running on the board, or stepping with the insect. But the emphasis has to be on form and not speed on the run. Okay? As you can see in the uh, deduction, it's, it's about... Uh, to maintain a result of running speed. Okay? Now, if you, it's not hard to go fast. It's not hard to maintain uh, horizontal speed. The important part that you have to think, even though it says here, to failure uh, to maintain a horizontal running speed, I still believe that you have to focus on the form of the run. Not on the form of toe point, that's not the point. It's, it's the correct motion of the arms, the correct motion of the legs. The running drills. If you do not have an agility ladder, I highly suggest you get this. This is great for little kids and it's fun. Okay? And I think that's what the, 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 the big thing about ladders is. It's, it's pretty fun. Now, why is it uh, important? This is, it looks easy, but it's hard to do it right. And what I really like about the ladder is that the kids need to think about it. <laughs> so you need to think about the coordination of it. You can tell their wheels spinning when you explain them what they need to do. And they do it a couple of times and they get all frustrated because they can't do it. But you know what? That's where their brain starts working. And again, it's great for warm-ups because it's warming up their brain too. Okay? Right, so it's great for eye and feet coordination, which they have to use their brain for that. And it, it makes the kids focus too. I always notice that when we're doing ladder drills, uh, the kids tend to focus a little bit more. Okay? okay? And then you can do lots of varieties. When you're doing this, you have to remember that using your knees bend or if you're using them straight is different, has a different effect. Okay? I like to do that with the bent knees. Okay? I think it has a better effect. Yeah, there's a couple more different combinations. So combine different directions with one leg. Uh, you can use knee bend or knee strike. And if you can have two ladders, they're not that expensive. These are, I, this is a Nike one, and I think they don't make this one anymore, but because I think it was expensive to the materials they used. But but I'm sure they, they, they there's a lot more variety of ladders now that you can get. So. I'm not sure how many feet this is, probably uh, 20 feet maybe. Uh, and you use two of them, that way you can have two groups of kids going at the same time. The only problem with this is that sometimes they weigh too much. Okay? 
What you want to do every time you do a drill for ladder, you want to start them slow. Make them slow, make sure they're doing the correct pattern of what they need to do, and then as the coordination improves, okay, you got to get going, you got to have them going a little faster. Lateral motions to strengthening, you know, the knee joints, everything around the knee joint. I know soccer players do it a lot, a lot of cutting and stuff, and we don't think in gymnastics there's cutting. Trust me, there's a lot of cutting, especially when they land a uh, double pull incorrectly. That's where all those ACL injuries and stuff, but you have to train and you have to strengthen, okay? Okay, side shuffling. Again, she's going slow, but this stuff is, you need to get to a point that they can do it really fast. But again, this is the age where level one and three kids are. Okay, this is their, their ability. Probably, it's going to take you a couple of days to do it right, but I, it's worth it. Totally worth it. Lots of coordination. Again, kids are very focused. They, they're not going to be goofing around too much when they do this. Uh, and again, search in YouTube for many variations of this. There's thousands of different ways you can do it. Okay, so I suggest do, don't do too many now. Pick up, like for a three week, three or four week period, pick up three <laughs> things that they need to do. Okay? And then go practice it for, for four weeks or three weeks or whatever you want to do. And then let them master it, then move on to the next one. But don't download 25 different combinations and then expect them to do them all. Okay? Well, they're all just going to get more confused. All right. Okay, now that's, that's great for inner thighs, too, which inner thighs will bind the form together, both legs. All right, so that's for a lot. Now, arm motion, when they're sprinting, very, very important that they learn how to Swing their arms in 90 degrees, okay? I hope all of you have talked or been to uh, track clinics or something like that because running is the basics of body motion, okay? If they can run correctly, that's a big, big advantage, okay? I know there's tons of, you know, uh, gyms that do agility training and stuff like that. Go one day and... I don't know, pay for a private or something, and just ask questions to the coach. You know, have them teach you a lot of drills, and, and they're really, really good. Arms 90 degrees, fingers pointed forward. Uh, start with slow motions. Remember, we're talking about level one and three gymnasts. Very slow motion, correctly done. Then start getting a little faster, okay? Making sure that the direction of the arms is forward, because we want to go forward. All the kids are going to go like this, or like this, or Lucy's all like this, too. <laughs> you see all, all kinds of stuff. Um, then strike jumps. That's strike jumps. That's, yeah. Strike jumps. Very important. Again, this is the motion of the, of the body. And they, that back arm should be uh, bent 90 degrees, too. But this is for the, for the fast pump. Okay? So we got fast feet, going fast feet. Okay. Then we got leg motion. Okay. Develop correct leg motion. Also emphasize your tight core. Okay, this you see a lot of kids, this is a pretty strong kid, so see that core staying pretty stable. Okay? A lot of the kids are going to start right there, you're going to see this. Okay, and that's where, it's also a core exercise. Okay, and again, this is not for them to do it perfect. It's so they can start being aware. Remember that I, when they run, if they keep their, their, their core tight when they run, you physically cover more ground. Okay, because when you stretch like this, the core is loose, you don't get the push that you do when your core is stuck. Okay, but again, it takes a lot of discipline, mental discipline for an athlete to keep their core tight if they do it. Okay. 
But again, they're going to have to think of that when they're being, when they're doing stuff. You're going to have to keep that courtly. So that's, I think that's a great education for them. Using different boards for running. Again, these are fun too. So all this stuff is fun. Remember, remember the age of kids that we're dealing with. We're wanting them to fall in love with the sport. Okay? And not just run, but run for the board, ball, come back. Now, when you're doing, when you're leading a program for balls in level one and three, you should barely use that. You should barely use that ball. You should barely you do it. Okay? You, these are the most important things that that is. Okay? Now, arm circle, we're going to talk a lot about the arm circle, which is it's a very important part. Learning how to lean back a little bit on the board. The kids don't, don't know the, compact, the, con, the, the concept of running and leaning back to punch a board. And then they, they don't understand. Well, at least when I was a gymnast, I did not understand that. You know, I had to really grow up and mature until I understood about how to lean back. And what does that mean? Again, if you, if you remember as a coach, we're not just coaching skills. We are teaching them concepts. We're teaching them body positions. We're teaching them body motions. So the more we can put them in a situation, in a learning environment, using the board slanted or mat or anything else, the better result you're going to get later. Your uh, results of progression is going to, the rate of progression is going to go a lot faster later if you do all this groundwork. You know, by the time they get to level, what is it, level three, I mean, they're going to be doing this ball really easy. And it's going to be very easy to transfer. Okay, so we got, uh, you know, for all the ones, I'm sure everybody does this stuff, so I put it here. Single leg sprints, finishing leg push up. That's really important, finishing the support leg push up. It's not just like this, it's finishing the push. -up. And, I, and I'm going to start referring to all these concepts five years from now. That leg, is the last curling leg into your chamber. There's so many problems when the kids go into all they're thinking is about flipping, so all they do is this, just push and go into it. They never finish the extension. The last when you do your chamber, the last three leg contacts with the floor can determine what you're gonna do later. What I mean by the last three contacts is <coughs> one, two, three. Those the hurdle, the reception of the floor on that leg again. And the front and the lunge play. Okay? If they don't, are not aware with these drills, when they get to level seven, when you're doing those Juchenkos, it's not going to work. Okay? All right, single leg candle rolls. Again, that's exactly for the same thing. Now, again, explain the kids why they're doing that. Don't just have them do it, explain them the purpose of what you're doing. Kids open on the way up. Excellent drill for switch leaps, too. Okay? Remember, switch leaps, both our kids close on the way down because they cannot push. So how do we want a switch leap? A switch leap should swing the leg and open and close on the way up, everything. Once you start to come down, your legs are already almost together. Okay? Beam and four switch leaps, that's what you want to show. You see all those kids that do really floaty switch leaps? You put in slow motion, that's what happens. Their maximum open of the leap, of the, of the split, is before they get to the top of the, of the jump, of the hips. And then they just hold it a little bit, and then when they start coming down, they go to the next thing. Okay. Thank for being. All right. I get too excited, and then I start talking about all the events on the arm. You just gotta tie in everything. And that, I mean, that's why. It's not just level one or three ball, it's, it's everything. All right. The hurdle is the transfer of power from the horizontal run to the punch on the board. Okay? That's why I was talking about those last, last three floor uh, contacts. Okay? An efficient hurdle maintains the horizontal momentum. Okay? From your run, <coughs> hurdle, okay? And then sets the body and the arms into the right position to exert as much weight or power on the board. You understand that? The hurdle, you're running, 
The job of the hurdle is to maintain the horizontal movement and to set the body in the right angle of punching and the arms into the right position. That's the job of the hurdle. Uh, very important when they're when they're uh, when you're doing all this groundwork, do like a little test which is the hurling left, or which kick, because later you're gonna really use that. You have to know which is the last punch they put in when they hurt, right? This, right? Now to go into it. Very important to know that because you're gonna use that information. Okay. So a vital part of the hurdle is the arm swing forward. Okay. There's many ways of doing it. I know in the early, what was it? Long time ago. <laughs> in the early 90s or 80s. Circle punch. I personally, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna parenthesis go back to what I said before the first clinic. What I'm gonna tell you, it's not the law. It's not what you have to do. It's what's worked for me, and I just wanna sparkle some ideas. Maybe not with all your kids, but one kid has a problem or the other. Okay, that's my that's my goal out of today to sparkle. I want you to walk out of here today having a plan for oh, this is gonna help this little kid. This is gonna help all my level three kids. That that for me, it's gonna be a success. Um, so, with that said, I don't believe in the arm circle like that. Okay, I do believe in the second half of it, which is here. The arms, whatever you do with the arms, they gotta go forward. Now, with that said, we can put in slow motion some super power bolts, and they'll go like this, okay? But, again, remember, power versus technique. A kid that's gonna do a handspring front, it's a lot more powerful than a kid that is doing just a level three ball, okay? So let's start with a technique, and then as they get more powerful, they can adjust. I'm gonna put you a little example of what I do as a method. On bars, when I'm teaching a shoot over, or, or you guys want a bail or an overshoot, we always teach it to hands and right away. With a certain method we do in certain spotting, and they go hands and I want them, the very first one they ever do, it goes to an instant and they go the, the arm motion exactly how we teach them. Now, and they, they're usually younger. Now, when they grow a little older, they will adjust to the bar setting and stuff. And as long as they end in a perfect hands, then we're good. And they keep a form and you know it's very acceptable. So, but you always want to start with the ideal technique. And know that certain kids are gonna adjust to it. But as long as you get the, the desired result, don't kill yourself over though, no, you gotta do the arms one too. Okay? So, anyway. Well, okay. <coughs> Uh, the important part is to be able to swing the arms forward when the board is expanding. Remember, and this is something very valuable for the future for you as a coach. The board has two movements, contraction and expansion. Okay? Problems are that the kids contract and they're already leaning forward before that. Okay? So really, if you lean forward, only their butt is going to bounce. If they lean back, and they go over the board when the board is expanding and a little bit forward, that's where we get the desired result. Okay? And a lot of that depends on the motion that they do before the board contracts. <coughs> Please, if, if, if I get too complicated, let me know. Okay, too big of an arm circle can disrupt the coordination between the arms and the, and the board motion. Okay? What happens? Have you guys watched seen this? See that before? <laughs> so the arm, so the arm circle is a waste of time, basically, when they do that. So that's why I got away from the arm circle and just have them run, okay? And the circle goes only with one arm. And then they go, they catch arm, both arms here, the board is contracting, now it's expanding, 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 and then they go. Okay, so they go here. Uh, but first, before, now that's very complicated for a little kid. They're not going to do it just because you told them, okay? It, this is a lot of drilling in order to get a good circle. But again, don't kill yourself over that one arm or the arm circle. 
if they, if they want to do a little arm circle, that's fine. But the problem is, that if the arms are moving correctly, guess what happens? You cannot do both arms at the same time. Because you're going to take off here. So what happens? And you're in the air. You can't go. What are you going to do? Bring one arm. You don't want to bring this one here. And like here you can do, but it's it's a quarter of a second. Instead of just going like this. Got it? All right. So some arm movement. Some arm movement. I mean, I have both in the middle of my floor, so I had to use them for something. <laughs> <laughs> also, they're there so tumblers don't go sideways. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Do you understand that motion right there? There's the extension out of what they need to do instead of learning this. So the next one. Okay, now with a jump, so you can combine all this, the motion of the arm going forward with just a swing. That's what you have to start with. And you can do this against the wall. But I like this because they can really swing arms back. Okay? Okay? Do a jump. Then the next one, which is the one I like the most, boom. That's exactly the motion they have to do. And then they can hold the shape down there. Now, if you don't have big pillows in your gym, I highly suggest you get them because they, you know how always as a gymnast, the oldest match were the best match, right? That's, that's what they did. They're, they're kind of like the old match. But they're, they're, who has big pills in their gym? They're wonderful, aren't they? Wonderful. And that, for a longest time, I was very frustrated with kids when we're doing your chain time where they didn't want to go to their back. With, with any injury, so nobody would turn to their back. As soon as these things came up, oh, they're all flipping to their back. Because they're comfortable. I mean, even their neck, their neck doesn't bounce off the, the, the man in the back, which those of you who are we're gymnasts know that that's like, you know, gives you a little headache after. Especially if you have a cute ponytail. <laughs> <All right. laughs> right. Now, fast arms. Again, going into a general gymnastics. This is <coughs> this is gymnastics. This motion. Okay? Arms, this is it. This is arm motion. This is your cast hands and your feet to hands and your giants. Stalwart, tall ones, everything. Front giants. This is the motion. This is the motion of a roundup in your arms. A roundup is not here, a roundup is here. Voice coaches, bubble horse, these are the circles. This is the arm motion of circle. It's not this, it's pushing away. Okay? Circle is pressing away. Same thing with cast two hands, free two hands, everything. Okay, so we have to train our kids to be strong in that shape and quick. Remember that gymnastics is an anaerobic sport, okay? It's about how fast you can, or your chain is about how fast you can get your arms back to the table. So you want to make sure you're getting your strong kids here. <coughs> Faster motions, head press here, really important. Keep the head pressed against the wall, against the floor. Why? Because it isolates the shoulders. A lot of kids are going like this when they're doing it. So guess what? They're not using the shoulders isolated. Okay? Um, this, uh, I usually do sets of like 20 seconds, fast starts, boom, 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 as fast as they can go. Okay? And then we add bands with bungee bands. Sets of 20 seconds as fast as possible. Okay? Notice her butt is off the floor and her head is pressed against the mat. That isolates the shoulder muscle. Okay? That way it's full work of the, of the shoulders. There's no help from other part of the body. Strengthen and create swiftness, arm swing, and keep the tight body shape. These are your Casper Hansen right there, too. Okay, now using the pole again, do this. Okay. <coughs> using bands. You know how we use bands for switch chips on the floor and all that stuff? Use them until they can do it right. Okay, so this arm swing, you're adding a bungee cord. Do it, use it until they can do it right. Don't do it before. Okay? You want to strengthen the correct arm move. Okay? That's your stand up out of the board. Okay? And again, when you stand up out of the board, going into the front handspring, the arms don't go here. 
They don't go there. They go here. Then the body rotates to this position. It's like a Yucheco full of mall. The arms don't go here. They go here, then the body catches up. Then you start twisting. It's like trampling. Those of you who know trampling, twisting. That's how it is. Just draw a circle there and have them see how many punches they can do in the, on the circle. Easy. <coughs> and, but look at the circle. Look at the arms. In that, in that black conditioning one, uh, we got a lot of flyer metric stuff. And a lot of kids want to punch like this. You know what I mean? And they have to do it like this. Okay? Always when you punch the arm, you want the arm motion to go up and not down. Again, powerful kids can do it, but not everybody's powerful. So bounce in the same spot. Okay. The coordination between the run, the arm swing, and the hurdle <laughs> arm swing is determining for maintaining the speed into the table. Remember what we were saying about the goal is to maintain the same speed or create more. Okay. Again, if they run, if they do a circle, and then they Go up there, this circle is taking away uh, speed. Okay, so drill it standing. Drill it static. Got it? I mean, she's doing it wrong. But it's okay. It's okay. See, she stops. The motion should keep going. Here, I can. You have to practice it. You know, see? Go. So you can go one, two, three, stop, go. Got it? One, two, three, stop. Okay, that's, that one is with an extra move. One, two, three, stop. So you have to think about it. I mean, you're not even going to, if you don't get it standing, how are you going to do it on a run when you're thinking of the front end spring or not hitting the tape? That's really important. And again, this is a station, this one here, that they can be doing on return on ball. Yeah? All right, so same thing over there. See? Okay, now you add a little bit of fun. You put your feet up on the panel, man. You did exactly what I was doing. One, two, three. Remember how I told you about you gotta determine their hurdling leg? <laughs> right here. You gotta make sure that they have on the floor their hurdling leg. Okay? The support. Okay, so you go one, two, three. If I have my right leg up, which one has to be the arm they end in front? Because I, I was just waiting for someone to ask me, how do you determine which one is the arm that they circle back? It's right there. So if I hurdle with my left on the floor, I put my right up, and then I do that drill. One, two, three. So which arm should I end in front? My left. So this one's the one that's going to hurdle back. So, so, in order for you to be clear with the kids, which one is the arm that's going to circle is the opposite arm of the leg. So, basically, the same arm of the support leg. Got it? Complicated for a second, but that is the same. Now you add a little bit more motion. Now they go from a, from a kneeling down position. Huh? That's for the hurdle. That's for the hurdle. So you want to make sure they're using the correct arms. Then you add a little bit more. Get it? Okay. And now, very important one day. Go from here to the circle. Let's not have them straighten up their arm. We want to get from here, bend elbows because the more bend there, it's the smaller the circle. The smaller the circle, the quicker it is. The quicker it is, the faster you set up for that forward reach. Okay, now you add a little bit more stuff too. And then 
And again, this with this kid, we did this in the, we did the program. We wrote it down everything, and then she did it in one day, one one session of filming. So she can't get the coordination right away. Okay, so it's I mean this coordination is going to happen, especially with kids that young. It's going to take a while for them to get. And I consider this kid a very talented kid. So I mean she couldn't get it right away. It took took her a while. Ruling the arm movement and the hurdling leg. <coughs> now we're going to combine the arm circle. That was, that was correct. That was correct. But see how she ends up with the opposite strike? But again, I mean, this would be extremely acceptable. It will be really good. Okay. But again, you always want to try to reach for 100, but you know that kid might go to 95 or 90. <laughs> right? So try very poorly. I mean, I'm sure you're, it's surprising how many kids cannot do this correctly. And sometimes they can't do it correctly because of the lack of direction. We always just have, okay, side jump, and they go, and the coaches don't pay attention to it. And then later, I mean, you don't realize how much you're going to be benefited. Your program, your gym, as your team, how much you're going to be benefited if you pay attention to those things that are easy to not pay attention. Yeah, they can get away with it, and they still look like they're working hard. Yep. Or can it come all the way up to the chest? No, it's here. Not the arm, the leg. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, it's. Like her stops, like, right at horizontal. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's where you want to be. Okay, not that's about good. that. Yep. Yeah, no, you don't. I don't. Because then, if you go too far above that, I don't think. You know how when you jump and you do, when you do a squat and you jump, if you squat too much, it declines the jump? It's kind of like the same thing. Well, remember that their head is going to tilt to where their eyes go. Sometimes they really don't care what they're looking at as long as their head is straight. Because there's some kids that are not sort of, they're not going to be watching. They they want to do first is punch the board, and then they're going to see the table. As long as they, they're not running like this. I mean, they can be running like this and looking at the board, and then immediately when they curl, and they know they're going to hit the board, their eyes go up. It's, it's not about what they're looking at. Pay attention to this. On bars, I talk about. It's not about what they're looking; it's about their head position. And usually, wherever they're looking, that's where their head goes. So that's why we say, "Look at this. Look at that." For example, the punch front. I would say, "Look, uh, don't look at the floor. Look to the front." Okay? And it's not really what they're looking; it's about the head. Remember, the head weighs so much that if you don't have the weight on top of the board when you punch. You get less exertion of energy. If you're like this, if you're leaning forward too much, then the weight of the head is not on top of the board. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. Okay, so start progressing to board on until the correct hurdle is done. Okay? It's still very hard for her to get it. But again, you always want them to focus on this, and you always want to strive for the best. And again, if you get to only 90%, that's still pretty good. As long as the kids understand and know that they have to work, work them with 100%. Yeah. It's really important that they do this correctly before performing it from a run. I know you still have to maintain a balance between running and not, you know, and just doing this drill, but. Don't get too frustrated if they're running and not even getting close to the drill that you've been teaching them. Okay? Because it's very hard. Alright, so 
developing the correct arm swings, drill them a lot, they did really good for that. Three boards or four or five, and teach them how to arm swing in between the arms. Okay? Don't let them go like this. In the back part, I would like to get bent a little bit more so it moves up a little faster. Okay, next thing. Okay, so any questions about that? We just, well, that's a lot of just the wrong. <laughs> you have a good technique for getting the lean back on the board, though? Yeah, I mean, you see the board's leaning back like that, too? I mean, I get it, but they don't. Exactly. That's why you have to create something visual and physical. So I try to prepare the floor to the springboard. I don't have to get the springboard full. I put the boards at an angle. I can set this how you get it in that Right, right. Yeah, well, the, the best thing I think is to put something in front that they have to punch it. Something that makes them lean. You know what I mean? Uh, I've seen a couple of different drills that are a little bit more complicated, but I do think like just Plane bouncing up, you know, and leaning back. Try to probably put like a wall, like a kick up, and then just have them bounce and, and go back. And I know that there's a, a resi, and they put the board and they put an eight incher here, and they kind of like step on the eight incher, they punch and then land on their belly on the, on the eight incher, you know. So, I, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, okay, the hands and face. Remember, this is the most important position in gymnastics. Make it a priority in your training of every single event. You have to create a daily handstand program, especially for the most fundamental level. And when I'm talking about a handstand program, it doesn't mean do lots of handstands, okay? It means shaping. Okay, right there, that's a handstand, right there. I like doing that one with, two. with a wall, here, so they put their hands like they're doing a handstand. Okay, and they put a belt and they're just shaping every possible way. Okay, it's threatening the lower back. I like this one. And they shape, lots of shaping. Right, you cannot have a nice, uh, a good gymnast, a very, you cannot have a successful gymnast without training these stuff. Notice head positions are aligned in every single Body okay. That was that the one you saw before is static shaping. Okay? When when you just stay in the shape. For little kids like level one to three, I wouldn't do static shaping more than 15 seconds. You know, they get they get their mind flying away. You want to make just just hold it for 10 seconds. You know, just give me the best shape, become a, a statue, become a freeze for 10 seconds. So work diligently on molding, okay? Uh, if they're not strong, they will not hold the mold. They will hold the, the shapes, okay? Sliders, shaping, and again, this is not, I don't want you to present it to them as conditioning. You've got to present to them as we're shaping your body. We're shaping your mind to hold the correct body alignment. They'll be like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. It sounds cooler than getting stronger. So give it, make it slow. You know, just see the, the lower back. Right there, lower back. Okay. Yeah. Then great for building handstand strength. The other one, it's a little bit more advanced. This one looks really easy, but it's really hard. Okay. Keeping a head aligned with it. You know, pressing through the shoulders. And then usually it's the whole length of the floor. Okay. You can do it with little babies, you can do it half. Okay. And then right when you get to that middle, change it to another one so they keep going all the way to the end. All right, and then just a plain shape against the wall, fall. All right, and to hold the shape there. Don't just have them repeat it and repeat it. They got to hold the shape right after they fall. You should be holding them when they're there, 
ball dynamic, the hip flat, pointed, keep the shoulders pushing, fall that position, and hold the same shape there that we're working on here. Okay. 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 So hands and drops, keeping body line and holding it all throughout. Hands and hopping, we do this a lot again. This one's not productive if they cannot hold a straight body line. Okay, because they're gonna get all loose and flop, and all you're gonna get is more of the of what's wrong. Now, the important part of this one is use the correct arm motion. Every time you're doing shaping and stuff and dynamic things for ball or for a certain specific thing, make sure you make it as close as possible to what you are actually working. In this case, the handsome part of ball. Okay? Because they will, they're gonna want to go like this. Instead of, no, no, we are vaulting. Go here. Okay? That way you're strengthening what you're working. Working to eliminate shoulder angle when you touch the table or a front handspring, you wanna have less <coughs> shoulder angle. Okay? But that cannot be entirely true in a perfect world. Okay? You need a little shoulder angle to pop the table. You need it. This, this is the block on the table. It's not this. This is just the ending part. The block really comes from this. Okay? But don't go with an angle. It just takes this much of, of arm shoulder close in order to have a good block. Okay? You have double track. Double tracks are really good for this. Make it easier. Use use uh, other pieces of equipment that allow you to do this stuff too. Remember, you want to strengthen the gymnast in every possible shape, not only in the in the handstand position. This is strengthening the handstand the rack. Okay. And you're gonna add a little bit more difficulty to it. That's the stand up out of a back handspring. To arm motion backwards. Okay? That's the arm circle, the last part of the arm extension going into the front end. Okay? okay, now let's see the level two ball. Uh, jump to handstand into a raised mat surface, fall to straight body, bang position in the back. So this is pretty much a level three ball to a lower surface. Sport time do I have to? Eight minutes? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we see the run, arms, and shake. And then the level three ball, same thing. Make sure everybody completes this. Circle. Now see how she kind of stops her arms in the bottom? That's what we want to avoid. Okay? Watch. Watch in the middle, right there. See? You want to have that arm circle. And obviously she's not a level three, so she doesn't do a front handspring. So, so she, uh, um, you know, she doesn't work on that long. But that's the idea. Okay, turn over drill. Turning over drill. That means from standing to a handstand. If you have a bungee. Right there. You want to work it so then they can keep a straight body line. Okay? You show, use, a, use a, a block. Depending on how strong and agile the kid is, you can do it like that. Okay? The next one. Again, these are fun stuff for the kids too. Turn over drilling. You do it on your elbows, on an 8 incher, and get up, chest in, and flip. Okay? You can do hundreds of those. Remember, you as a coach want to find some methods and some drills that the kids can repeat a lot. You know, the, the more, just like the bars, the more turns they take on the bars, the more possibilities of improvement they have. They cannot improve if they're not a day for You tell the kids and they're like, here's a point. We're going to chuck up less. We're going to take more turns. All right. Over a barrel. Now, the nice part of this one is that they have to work it to get up. Okay? Even though you don't want to see a big of an arch, 
Eventually, if you want them to do a handspring front, they need that little open hip in order to, to play the second one. But that, that's a little one, too. And, and it's a good way you could probably use the arms, get in front, and then go to two and two. Excellent. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, you can come up to me and be glad to help.